I am thrilled to be here and, and really excited for this session. Um, and uh, a warm welcome to all of you educators and attendees of this symposium. Um, I think we all have the intention really to, to um, benefit students, I think, at the end of the day. Uh, we want to reach out and, and use these wonderful tools that are available to us to, to make their lives better. So thank you for taking time and, and joining us. I'm going to share my screen. I have a presentation. Can you see that, Matt? Can you guys see that screen there? Yes, we can. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, That's so great. a little introduction to myself. Um, I am a senior mechanical designer at AvidBots. Uh, so I wear one hat that is in the professional design world. And I also am a professor at Conestoga College where I teach CAD for manufacturing. So I'll give you a brief introduction to those two worlds. And uh, one reason I feel so lucky to be here today is because I see both the side of the teaching where the students are learning and getting excited about a career in design and the real world application of design. Um, I think that uh, it's really nice to see this, um, uh, this bridge between the two worlds of, of academic and, and uh, production design. So I'm gonna start off with AvidBots. So this is a couple of slides that show our main product. Uh, AvidBots makes an, an, a fully autonomous industrial uh, floor scrubber. So the kind of floors that you'd see in a mall, in a sports stadium, airports, warehouses, schools. Um, this is our bread and butter. And we make a uh, fully autonomous robot that is able to navigate in real time. It understands the map of the area that it's um, traversing and it can dynamically avoid obstacles safely uh, during its uh, operation. So um, one of these slides is actually rendered in Onshape. So I'll give you a second to, uh, to try to figure out which one is the rendering and which ones are the professional photographs. Uh, it's one of the aspects that I love about Onshape is that once we are getting close to visualizing a design, we can provide that to our teams to see what it's going to look like in the real world. So make your choice. And this is the rendered uh, Neo. So this one is um, just taken directly from CAD and rendered in Onshape to produce this slide. So it's very helpful to visualize our designs. Um, in their locations and understand how customers are gonna interact um, and experience our products. So a little more about AvidBots. I'm going to just segue and show you a short video because seeing a Neo in motion or our, our product in motion, I think is gonna be helpful for understanding what the product is. Lovely. So 
Uh, that's seeing our robot in motion, and I hope it gives you a, a good sense of, of the product. One thing that's nice about uh, Avid Bots is the product they're designing is very intuitive to understand. Almost anyone who sees a picture or sees a short video immediately understands the function of the product. It's one of the hallmarks of, of great products is that they just seem to be so natural as if, why didn't someone think of this before? So uh, industrial cleaners have been around for a number of years. The industry is well established, but it requires someone to physically walk behind a floor cleaner. And, and uh, you know, in a typical store, they have to walk many miles just guiding the robot along when they could be much better utilized as, as cleaning personnel on the detailed tasks that humans are great at, like cleaning uh, around cashiers, cleaning in between hard to reach spaces, um, but let the robot take care of the vast open areas of, of floor aisles. So this is uh, AvidBot's um, uh, special position. We have about 300 employees um, uh, that work and that spans software, hardware design. I would say half the company is just in software. So there is a huge effort in the teams that deal with sensors and perception and transforming that perception into uh, intelligent mapping and real-time navigation. So understanding where the robot is, what um, either people or objects are around it in real time, and then dynamically path planning. Uh, so having that all happen real time when you're cleaning is, is a, a symphony of intelligence that goes into uh, moving along at high speed and cleaning the floor. So uh, one thing that's special about our robot is it has a fully integrated sensors. So the pods and housings are designed around uh, the sensors that we chose. So it's not something we added to an existing floor scrubber. They're integrated uh, by design from the beginning. Um, and the special thing that we offer is advanced obstacle avoidance. So we have a lot of safety systems and, uh, you know, we're very uh, uh, thoughtful in the way that we approach robotics because we know that safety is, is uh, the highest priority beyond anything else. And we put that into every one of our design reviews and discussions is that we're building um, you know, safe robotics that can uh, enhance what uh, people are doing in the cleaning industry every day. Um, one of the other special things that AvidBoss provides is cloud-based cleaning analytics. So uh, managers of cleaning plans and, and who are taking care of uh, caring for a store, a mall, can see uh, what areas were cleaned, the quality of that clean, and they have a uh, complete timeline uh, over the weeks and months about uh, how cleaning's been applied at their location. So it gives them a lot of insight into how they want to use the resources that they have. Um, in the cleaning industry, it's, it's really hard to qualify and quantify the cleaning that takes place on a nightly basis at your mall. You're depending on the staff um, and it, you don't have the kind of analytics and data to make good decisions about how you want to employ those resources. So AvidBots has a cloud-based uh, data management system that provides a lot of insight into uh, cleaning management. So this is one hat that I wear as a senior mechanical designer for AvidBots. Uh, the other role that I play is I also teach at Honestoga College, local college here in Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario. And I'm gonna focus on specifically Conestoga's use of Onshape. So just an overview of the college, we have uh, 55,000 students that attend the college. So, you know, every time I see a number like that, it's, it's hard to comprehend a small city of students that are actually attending uh, Conestoga, but we have a lot of full-time students that are actively engaged in our courses and programs. And of those, we have 500 uh, students specifically enrolled 
are, uh, we have 500 students who've used Onshape at the college. So this is just the students who are actually actively engaged in using Onshape. Um, one of the key things that Onshape enables us to do is allow CAD access on an international basis. We have a lot of students that travel internationally to come to our college and also they, they attend some of our courses internationally and I'll show you a map of that in a moment. And one of the key features that Onshape extends to us is we have no limits on the accounts that we create. We have no limits on the data that those students are, are creating. So uh, it is a huge uh, advantage that we can offer the students that we're not maintaining um, servers, uh, maintaining databases, uh, backing that up, replicating that, all of the IT uh, support to allow these students to experience CAD freely is offered by Onshape. So that is a, a big advantage for the college in that they don't have to continually invest in the infrastructure to support uh, CAD. And they'll just underline this last part, which is so far in the two years that we've had Onshape, and I check in with our IT, school IT regularly, they have never had a single ticket or issue raised, um, there's zero support required from, from the school side. So Onshape has this wonderful product that they've designed for industry. And I think they understand that they can offer this tremendous value to students and teachers around the world. And I am so grateful that they've made this possible because it just lifts the burden of so much complication for the students, for the schools, and allow students to get to the heart of design and using CAD. Um, so it, it removes so many barriers and so much friction and red tape that just allows them to get the, the real experience and thrill of designing their own products without having to get bogged down in a lot of the uh, traditional software barriers that exist with other CAD products. So I'm going to just segue and show you a little bit of what Onshape looks like at Conestoga. I'm going to jump into a uh, analytics page. This is the actual uh, Conestoga enterprise page. And uh, first up, we have over 500 uh, accounts that are active at, uh, in the database. And you can just look at some of these numbers the students have produced. So almost over 13,000 documents have been opened, 7,000 assemblies have been created. We're all approaching 6,000 drawings created. Uh, as a team, they've, they've almost modeled 14,000 hours of time. Um, if I just take a little trip down and look at some of the active users, of course, uh, active users are going to be the professors that offer courses at the school, which are myself, Colin, and Kelly. Uh, but some of the students are putting in big hours uh, and learning, actively learning design. So Sahil is one of our top students. We'll take a look at him in a second. This map here, I find really interesting to see where our students are coming from. So you can see um, Every time a student logs in or is actively using the system, you can see a lot of them are coming in from India, from the Middle East, from places in Europe, and even here in North America, as we zoom in a little bit and take a look at where students are coming from across Ontario, um, you can see if I were to ask you, where is the school located, you might have trouble identifying where Conestoga College is. You might even say it's in Toronto, which it's not. Um, so there's a lot of students that are accessing uh, school resources and doing CAD online, and they're nowhere near the physical location of the school here in, in Guelph and in Kitchener. We have a couple locations. Um, so I, I find this really interesting to see um, how this international access extends CAD around the world for our students who are actively using that system. So as a teacher, you might be interested, like, how would I use this? And, and you know, how could I use this to benefit my students? I'll just pop into Sahil. So he's 
one of our, our main active students. I'm gonna jump into his, his dashboard here. So we'll be able to actually see what sahil has been working on lately um, in the last 30 days. So uh, you can see what his modeling time has been devoted to and how much time he's been active in the system. And if I wanna go and, and check to see what Sahil's actually built, I can just click on uh, the document and open that up. And it's gonna take me to the vice table that he's been working on. So he has a master sketch layout for a table. Uh, then he has a weldment here developed with a tabletop. And then finally, he's developed an assembly of that uh, weldment and tabletop and put a vice here. And I can even see that he has made a device so that um, as the device jaw turns, then the handle moves. Um, and I could see the complete timeline of everything that uh, Sahil has been up to click by click. So we can get a lot of insight into uh, how much time students are spending on different assignments and, and see what their activity is. So it's, it's wonderful to have such free and open access to, to get a, a perspective on the class, to get a perspective on what individual students are doing, um, and to have this globally available to our students. So that's a little bit about um, my background at AvidBots and as a teacher at Conestoga College. Um, recently, I was in a uh, another conference with a colleague of mine, uh, Alison Olachowski. She's a professor at University of Toronto. And during our conversation, she paused and, and she said, isn't it strange that students finish school having little experience of product data management? And I've been reflecting on that question for a little while now. It's such an interesting question because you know, we all want our students to have a complete experience of what CAD is and how it fits into, into design uh, to make real world products. And yet, um, you know, Allison understands that once you enter the, the real working world, that data that's created in CAD of, of how objects are, are fitting together and the bill of materials for objects, that all needs to be uh, woven into um, uh, actual production uh, in the real world. And that requires a lot of data management. Uh, it requires things like workflows, approvals, revisioning of, of items, and a lot of the experience uh, that students need, they don't have. Um, so before you know, we look at why that's so important, I just have a couple of slides on, on what is data management, like why is data management so important in the actual production? So here is a, a, a picture of some of our robots in process as they're being assembled. And um, you know, when we think about CAD and CAD design, we think about um, parts, we think about groups of parts and their relationships in assemblies. We think about production drawings and we think parts model, parts assemblies, drawings, that's all of CAD. Uh, but really CAD is, um, has to be part of a much bigger process of taking that data and communicating that across an organization. Um, so the reason that it's important to have revision control and, and clarity about what the bill of materials is as it evolves over time, is that production is very delicate. Um, a colleague of mine recently was explaining about production and um, all of these things that you see in front of you, the actual work that's taking place on an assembly line, it depends on things like work instructions. So a work instruction will say what items go together in what order, um, whether you're applying um, Loctite to fasteners, um, how you're fitting things together, what is the torque on individual uh, fasteners as you're putting things together, um, how do you build up assemblies in, in the physical world. All of this comes from work instructions and they're all driven by the CAD design. Um, 
Another thing that's part of production is inventory management, how you're placing orders for items, maybe six, eight weeks, sometimes 12 weeks ahead of time, bringing in sufficient quantities and preparing all that so you can do the build six months from now and that you have sufficient items and that they're all coming together to produce your product. And of course, this is all uh, affecting the schedule, the rate at which you can um, ship your products out to customers. Customers are placing orders and you want a quick turnaround on, on what you're providing to them. So this entire symphony of production um, is happening in real time. And the way that I like to think about our designs is as we're making changes and improvements, we need to weave these changes into an actual production that's in motion. So it's like weaving threads into a loom and the loom is moving at the same time that you're trying to thread these changes in. And it's why revision control and clarity on what's changing, what groups of things are changing at what time is so important. And all of this is data management. And all of this is something students have very little experience of because they don't have data management, production data management, product data management tools that they've been exposed to. And I'll look at the reasons why they haven't been exposed to that in, in a moment. Um, I'm going to uh, go a little bit deeper into what it means to weave a design into an assembly line. Um, and I'll show you some, um, uh, some actual examples uh, here in Onshape uh, of how we use um, Onshape and CAD um, in the real world. So um, whenever an issue is raised uh, with our team, it ends up on what we call a Kanban board of engineering change requests. So um, here we have a bunch of huge issues of various things that are, we've noticed, and they'll be reviewed by a team and moved along from left to right in a process of review and escalating those depending on how important they are to our, us as a business, how important they are to our customers. Um, so we investigate, we eventually end up in a pre, what we call a pre-ECO review. So an ECO is an engineering change order. And when an engineering change order is being prepared, we're going to devote um, uh, engineering resources to exploring designs on how to solve some of these issues that we're seeing uh, in the field or trying to make products better for our customers. Um, so um, I'll give you a little tour uh, example of a change that we made. Uh, so this is Neo, our robot in Onshape. And I'm gonna take a section view and start pushing through the model. Um, and uh, in the past, we had this uh, control module at the front of our um, robot. So this houses our motor drivers that control the front drive motor and the steering. Um, and inside this box, you can see we have some circuit boards uh, that are, have some capacitors. These are connectors um, and especially the two uh, motor controllers that we have um, actually sending the voltage and amperage to make the motors move and control the motion of the robot. So um, we as a team decided that we wanted something that was less expensive to manufacture uh, and a little more integrated. So uh, the team moved to taking those um, uh, drivers and put those chips on a single PCB along with the um, inductors and capacitors, and they um, were able to get all of the connection points into just three connectors. So they provided this model to me um, as a PCB, and then they wanted me to wrap uh, protective housing around this and integrate that into our robot. So um, first thing you do is you come up with a, a design that especially a design that is capable of being tooled, which is a way of pouring molten aluminum into a, a mold and wrapping this around the board. So you can see here, um, if 
I take a cross section across here and I exclude the PCB, you can see how um, the actual tooled box is wrapped around the design and especially uh, an area of heat, which is here at the, the uh, motor controllers, we put a set of heatsink fins and then use a fan to dissipate the heat coming off these boards. And you can see that all of this is wrapped around in a very careful way so that the gaskets here, which are like little marshmallows that are squeezed into the surface of the box, close at just the right amount of pressure, which is half compression of this two millimeter gasket gets compressed to one millimeter. And that's the right amount to form an enclosure uh, around uh, the circuit board. So first come up with a design that wraps around the PCB, add fasteners that hold the PCB uh, into the box, uh, put a fan on that and add your plugs. We have a vent, which is for breathing, allowing um, pressure and moisture to come out of the box, but not allow it to return. And Finally, we can put in our wire grommets. We have a gasket in the lid here. That's sealing the top of the box. And uh, finally, I'll put the lid on the top. And this is our redesigned box coming from the square one, which you saw before, a rectangular box into something that's much less expensive to, to make because it's, uh, it's a tooled part. And uh, a lot of the components have been uh, synthesized into this PCB board. And if we head back up here to our top level Neo, um, and I um, jump into uh, the frame and let's see. So this um, object is now in the, in the front of Neo um, and it's replacing that uh, existing board. Let me just open this up. And I'm going to isolate the front electrical box. So here it's positioned in the front of Neo. Um, and um, it's cleared all of its other components, not interfering. And this was a very successful uh, improvement on the existing box. So once we decided that this is a good design and it fits everywhere where we want it to in, in Neo, uh, next you have to um, process all of that data change through the organization. And this is where data management becomes so important is that, uh, so I'm, I'm showing you a screen, which is all of our engineering change orders. And you can see there's a lot of orders in process. And this particular one was number 722, just one of the many, many changes that's happening in the robot. And if I go into just this one single ECO, you can see the complexity of the data. So these are all the things that are changing revision. Um, all the prices are here, uh, the results of, of this change. And if we look at some of these other tabs, these are all the items that are affected in the robot. Um, all of the actions that need to take place. Uh, the bill of materials, these are all the things that are new coming into the system. And these are all the things that are old and leaving the system. Um, even down here to the last tab, which is our Rojas and Reach compliance. So every single item that we uh, make, produce, and, and add to the robot needs Rojas and Reach certification. And those have to do with uh, materials that are not allowed, uh, mercury, cadmium, dangerous materials uh, that we want to keep out of our lakes, our rivers, our environment. So every single one of the items has an actual cert certification, and we keep that documentation of every uh, circuit board, every chip, every piece of metal that we use is Rojas and REACH compliant. So all of this uh, data and data management is part of um, uh, supporting the understanding about what the product is made out of and then weaving this real time into the production on, on the uh, manufacturing floor. So I'm coming all the way back to uh, this slide and this single line, which is um, 
you know, once you're done with the CAD design, making your parts, assemblies, and drawings, uh, weaving that into an actual assembly that's in motion is something that needs to be handled delicately because production is, is so delicate. So um, if this is so important and, and just giving you a brief overview, seeing you know, how much is involved in, in changing out a single electrical box like, like I'm demonstrating, why don't schools teach data management? Um, so the answer, and we've explored this in our other sessions, but basically traditional, making a traditional school PDM is, it's too complex. So if I think about a high school that's doing first robotics, or I think about a college or university, there's lots of design work going on and you can get free resources to design CAD on, on everybody's laptop. Well, only Windows laptops for most people if they're not using Onshape. But uh, the data management system that would manage uh, workflows, approvals, uh, revision control, watermarking drawings, all of these things that are normal and, and uh, well-established in the engineering world, it's very complex to establish that as a school. Maybe you have an outstanding teacher or professor that, that knows how to set up a PDM, but these are large and complex animals. You have to get a server, you have to install SQL database typically, uh, and you need someone who's going to maintain that over time. Um, so, um, you know, even if you have someone that can set it up, you need an IT team or department to continually maintain this. So it's possible for maybe a business to do this. Small business is also very difficult for them to, to set this up properly. But at schools, I can see why it's almost impossible for them to have the resources, time uh, to establish a functional PDM and then maintain that, upgrading the versions of the, the PDM, upgrading the versions of the SQL database, maintaining those servers over time, resetting them when they need, uh, backing them up, replicating them. And security, you know, it, it's, it's something that's a full-time job to maintain these kind of systems. So schools just don't have the resources. And ultimately our students are missing out. They're missing out on this foundational uh, understanding of half of the job of, of an engineer in the world of production. So um, yeah, just reiterating the, the purchasing of the server, the database and, and configuring that is all very complex. And then maintaining that over time is, is very challenging. So that's why schools in the past up till now have been generally unable to offer this kind of experience to their students. But Onshape is, is changing that because the PDM system, uh, workflows, approvals, um, revisioning is all naturally built into the product. Um, and so, you know, I see a lot of similarities between AvidBots, the company I work for. Oh dear. Sorry, there's a fire alarm going on in my building. <laughs> um, so, I see a lot of similarities between AvidBots uh, and Onshape. We both want to make products that are making a difference in, in other people's lives, you know, in the world. And the similarities of, of, of Onshape, so they make a software product. Uh, AvidBots makes a product that's both software and hardware, but wanting to, um, you know, design robots. Oftentimes, I think we're not just designing robots at AvidBots. In a way, we're designing a robot company. And that means that we're intentionally and thoughtfully designing our processes, designing our collaborations between our teams, designing a company that is very efficient in making great products for our customers. So Onshape is, is a, a wonderful partner and uh, PTC as a whole 
uh, we look forward to working closely with them over time. Uh, AvidBots is approaching the point at which we want to take a lot of this complex data management that we're doing in Google Sheets and moving that into a PLM. So we're in active uh, discussion about uh, moving our data management into Arena, which is another great product that PTC has recently acquired and having Onshape and Arena be a real foundation for all the great products that AvidBots is going to move forward and, and continue uh, developing for our customers. So we have a lot of shared values with Onshape, like the uh, open collaboration with, uh, amongst teams and, and our vendors, our design partners, um, our dedication to innovation. So um, we're forward thinking and we understand that Onshape you know, is entering a marketplace that it's well established with a lot of products, but they have a fundamentally different approach and a fundamentally better approach to CAD design. Um, and so AvidBots also has that forward motion that we're taking a traditional industry, floor cleaning, and we're, we're making that autonomous so that you know, our staff, people don't have to walk behind these and they can apply their, their effort in a way that, that's most suitable to them, either managing uh, the cleaning that the robots are doing doing detailed areas that humans are good at. So we really see it as a partnership between our customers and uh, the everyday workers that are, are making clean spaces in, in, our, in our malls, in our schools, in our hospitals, in our airports. Um, so ultimately, the products that Onshape is making, they're trying to make CAD design better for their customers and for our students and you as educators. And I see that as a shared value with AvidBots. We're trying to make products that make uh, cleaning more efficient for our customers. We have one bonus shared value, which I always find kind of funny, which is our colors. So the colors of AvidBots, uh, the green, the gray, the white that you see on our products that are emblematic of our brand, just happen to be exactly the same colors as PTC. So it seems like we have a lot of values in, in common with each other. Um, so I'll leave you with just one last uh, rendering that we did in, in Onshape. And uh, I think this kind of shows uh, looking forward into a better future. So both for a better future of product design and a better future for all of these budding CAD students who just want to understand design. They want to uh, express their ideas, their innovations, their creativity, and they want to build things with all the, the tools that CAD has. And Onshape removes so many of the barriers uh, to access, um, and especially barriers to, to details like product data management that up till now have really been uh, sheltered away from students because schools just weren't able to offer that kind, that level of course and that level and quality of education to their students. So I'm looking forward to a, a great continued partnership with Onshape and PTC, both as a educator and as a product designer. And I'm just thrilled to really speak uh, on behalf of Onshape, because I'm just an independent user. Um, I, I have no motivation directly connected to Onshape. I just love using the product every day. And I would love to see um, all of the features be available to our students uh, and to my colleagues who are also doing CAD design. Um, so just thrilled to be here and, and I'm really grateful for the invitation to speak to you today.